What's up guys, the NHL obviously isn't going to surpass the NFL in terms of popularity anytime soon, but it's sure gaining some ground on the NBA and MLB. The NHL has begun seeing some major growth since the end of the 2004-05 lockout, thanks in large part to these multi-billion dollar TV contracts and the rise of superstars like Sidney Crosby and Alexander Ovechkin. But every sports fan knows there is nothing more exciting than the playoffs. And without a doubt, the NHL is the best postseason tournament of them all. So why doesn't it get as much love as the other sports. If you're guilty of not giving the NHL playoffs too much attention, we hope to change your mind with this list. I'm Jason Biondo, and today we present 10 reasons why the Stanley Cup playoffs are the best in all of sports. And don't forget to leave your video ideas down below. We'll be looking, and if we pick your idea, we'll give you a shout out in the video. So keep commenting, and you get to be famous. Don't forget to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications, because we post videos, you know it, every single day. Every day is a new video. So if you want new sports content every day, then subscribe. And join the notification squad. It's the coolest squad out there. Squad what up, kids? And a big shout out to the Hawk for suggesting this video. I really hope you're Tony Hawk, but I doubt it. So thanks, Hawk. Number 10, the handshake line. After every Stanley Cup playoff series, the two teams get in line and shake each other's hands. They do this to acknowledge the tremendous respect they have for each other after a well-fought series. Even the most fierce and heated rival teams do this with each other. Alexander Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby have been trying to outdo one another for over a decade now. The Boston Bruins are always going at it with the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens. And it's always physical, intense, and aggressive play between the original six foes. Nonetheless, the two sides always have the guts to congratulate one another when it's all said and done, no matter what happens. You know how they say that Canadians are polite? Well, it shows here. Hockey is their game, and this tradition all started in their country. You don't get this in other sports. You get the odd handshakes and hugs between some players after NFL games and MLB or NBA series. But for the most part, it's just the team celebrating their success together. The NHL displays professionalism and class here. There is always a hand shake after each series. That sets a great example for the kids on how to be gracious winners or losers. Put rivalries aside for a minute and just be nice. Is that too much to ask? Not in the NHL apparently. Number 9. Overtime Thrillers Are extra innings in baseball fun? Not really for my parents because the games just dragged on and they always wanted to go home, but some people actually like it. How about the NBA playoffs? Eh, I mean 5 minutes is whatever. And how many games actually go to overtime these days? Or the NFL? I mean give me a break. It's stupid how the Super Bowl can be determined by the simple flip of a coin. But hey, it all worked out nicely for none other than the New England Patriots. And I'm sure they're not complaining. When it comes to extra time, the NHL playoffs undoubtedly take the cake. All those thrilling back and forth contests that go to overtime. And often the contests require double overtime, sometimes triple overtime, sometimes quadruple overtime, and of course, sometimes five overtimes. There were two playoff games back in the 30s that needed six overtimes. That's crazy, but also awesome. There's nothing like a game seven going into overtime. Think about Pete Babando Stanley Cup clincher back in 1950, or Chris Kunitz game winner to send Pittsburgh to the Stanley Cup final in 2017. Overtime equals more drama and more excitement. The NHL playoffs do that way better than the NFL, NBA, and MLB. There's no doubt about it. Number eight, the Stanley Cup equals the best trophy. Nothing against the Larry O'Brien trophy for the NBA champions, or the Lombardi trophy for the NFL champion, or the Commissioner's trophy for the World Series champions. But all those trophies, in regards to both design and history, just aren't on the same level as the Stanley Cup. The Lombardi trophy was introduced in 1952, and the trophy itself just isn't very big, and it's not too shiny. We like shiny. I mean, it's shiny. It definitely is, but it's just like, I don't know. There's something about the Stanley Cup. The Larry O'Brien trophy has only been around since 1977, and the Commissioner's trophy has only been around since 1967. The cup has been awarded since 1893, and over the years, the league had to expand on the size of the trophy. Here's what it originally looked like. Yeah, that's different. The trophy was named after Lord Stanley of Preston, the governor of Canada from 1888 to 1893. A major fan of hockey, Lord Stanley donated the Stanley Cup in 1892. And in 1926, the trophy was awarded to strictly NHL teams. And by the way, it's the oldest trophy in professional sports. And it's also the largest by quite a bit. So moving on. Number seven, the unsung heroes. For Super Bowl winners, it's almost always quarterbacks doing the bulk of the work for this team. Or it's his usual star wideouts, running backs, and the team's top pass rushers. The NFL just doesn't have room for many unsung heroes in the playoffs these days. Days. The NBA? I mean, it's always teams top two, three, or four players doing all the damage. And baseball, again, it's always the stars. You don't get a lot of unsung heroes anymore. But in the NHL, man, just look at all these unsung heroes from the 21st century alone. J.S. Ziegler, 2003. The unknown netminder single-handedly took the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim to the 2003 Stanley Cup Final. He went 15-6 and six with a disgusting 
45 save percentage and a ridiculous 1.62 goals against average. With five shutouts, Anaheim lost to New Jersey in the Stanley Cup final, but this guy won the Conn Smythe as playoff MVP anyways. Almost a Cinderella story, but he and the Ducks would eventually win it all in 2007. Bruce Law and Fedotenko, 2004. He had only 39 points in the regular season, but Fedotenko scored Tampa Bay's two goals in game seven of the Stanley Cup finals against Calgary, leading the Lightning to their first Stanley Cup ever. Cam Ward, 2006. This rookie netminder took over for a struggling Martin Gerber in the first round of the 2006 playoffs. All Ward did was lead the Carolina Hurricanes to their first Stanley Cup championship. It's no big deal. He won the Conn Smythe as well. Max Talbot, 2009. He had just 12 goals and 22 points in the regular season, but he scored twice in game seven of the Stanley Cup finals against the defending champion Red Wings. With that, he led the Penguins to their first Stanley Cup in 17 years. Dustin Bufflin, 2010. The Blackhawks were loaded with future Hall of Famers, but the big man had 16 points in 22 games, including five game winners. And that helped the Blackhawks win their first Stanley Cup in 49 years. Brian Bickle, 2013. 17 points in 23 playoff games. The unknown Bickle led Chicago to their second Stanley Cup in four seasons. Justin Williams, 2014. Always a solid top six winger throughout his career. Williams became Wayne Gretzky-like in the postseason. He had 23 points in 24 games, leading the Kings to their second Stanley Cup in three years. He too won the Conn Smythe Trophy. Matt Murray, 2016. Marc-Andre Fleury got injured near the end of the season. Little known Matt Murray took over the crease and dominated the competition. He led the Penguins to their fourth Stanley Cup. And oh, he led the Pens to their second straight title in 2017. Now, did any of you know who he was two years before that? Probably not. All right, you diehard NHL fans, how many of you even knew any of these guys before the Stanley Cup Finals rolled around? There are always unsung heroes in playoff hockey. Doesn't that make it more fun? It's better to have these feel-good underdog stories, isn't it? Number six, sticks and stones may break my bones, but it'll never really hurt. Obviously, there are some injuries in which athletes cannot play through, but we have to credit hockey players for the ultimate toughness they displayed during the postseason. In the 1964 Stanley Cup Final, the Toronto Maple Leafs needed a victory to force a Game 7 over the Red Wings. Toronto defenseman Bobby Bond had to leave Game 6 after breaking his ankle. All he did was come back in overtime and score the winner. The Maple Leafs would win Game 7 to clinch the championship. During a 2010 playoff game, Blackhawks defenseman Duncan Keith lost seven teeth after taking a puck to the face. All he did was come back a few minutes later and help Chicago punch a ticket to the Stanley Cup Final. In 2013, Boston Bruins forward Gregory Campbell broke his leg after blocking a slap shot. And what did he do? He stayed on the ice until the Bruins killed off the penalty. And you know, Sidney Crosby played through a broken foot during the 2007 postseason. During the 2017 playoffs, San Jose Sharks star Joe Thornton played through a torn ACL and MLC. And then you look at the NBA and all their flopping and oh my god, I'm hurt, oh my god. Even NFL players who like completely whimper at like the worst injury. And these guys are playing through it in the game on a half inch blade on ice. Like what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure hockey is probably the toughest sport out there or at least one of the toughest sports out there. What these hockey players fight through is amazing. Torn muscles, broken bones, lost teeth. They don't stop and won't stop. They just want to win. Is that not heroic and admirable enough for you? Like, come on. Number five, the scheduling. During the first two rounds of the playoffs, there is no such thing as an off day. For NFL, you only get games on Saturday and Sunday during the wild card and divisional rounds. Then you wait all week for the conference championships and two weeks for the Super Bowl. The MLB playoff scheduling is annoying. Some of these games take place in the morning or early afternoon, depending on your time zone. You know, while some of us are at school or at work. So we have to miss a bunch of these games? Kind of annoying. The NBA, I mean, it's all over the place. A series will have game one on Monday, game two Thursday, game three Sunday, game four Tuesday, game five Saturday. Like what? That makes no sense. Sometimes they'll have one night off and other times they'll have three or four nights off. Why not keep it consistent for the first two rounds? In the NHL playoffs, teams usually only get one day off between games. Sometimes two. That's the way it should be. We don't have to wait all week. We don't have to always wait two or three days between games in every series. The scheduling is better from mid-April to mid-June. It's all hockey. Practically every day. Nearly two full months of hockey. Like, it's amazing. Number four, intensity and tempo. If you're all about the ongoing action with no time for a breath of fresh air, then playoff hockey is your thing. This isn't the NFL where you have to wait for 40 or more seconds between plays. And my god, how annoying are all these commercials? There are what, like five per quarter? MLB? Don't get us started. The pace is horrible, and things only seem to slow down even more in the postseason. What, with all those mound meetings and pitching changes? The NBA is alright, but it can sometimes take five to ten minutes to play at least 30 seconds of the game. In the NHL, each period only has three commercial breaks. In playoff overtime games, there are no commercials. That means the teams have to keep their engines revved up throughout the entire game. This brings more tempo, more physicality and resiliency. They don't stop going. They're bringing full out energy from puck drop until the 
game ends. And a lot of that is because the NHL gives them very little time to cool down. Only nine TV timeouts throughout the game, excluding intermissions. So thank you, NHL. You're the one pro sport league that we watch that won't let us get off the edge of our seats. The intensity and energy during the NHL playoffs is truly something else. Number three, game and series quality. We needn't go off on the NBA too much here. The first two rounds are a total waste of time. Everybody would rather just cut straight up to the final four. Nobody would complain if the NBA just handed championships right to the Golden State Warriors every year. I mean, come on, it's pretty much what's gonna happen. Although I do have faith in the Bucks, I kinda want them to win. The NFL only has 11 playoff games every year, and only a handful of them ever go down to the wire. In the NFL, it'd be nice if Wild Card Weekend and Divisional Round contests weren't always so boring. For Major League Baseball, I mean, yeah, the games can be exciting and all, but from 1988 to 2018, only eight World Series acquired Game 7. That's crazy. Like, why, why even need it? We usually get at least one Game 7 in the NLCS or ALCS every year, but they're usually blowouts. Just look at some of the more recent ones here. 2004, Red Sox 10, Yankees 3. 2007, Red Sox 11, Indians 2. 2012, Giants 9, Cardinals 0. 2017, Astros 4, Yankees 0. 2018, Dodgers 5, Brewers 1. But dude, just think about all these thrilling NHL Game 7s we get these days. We get multiple Game 7s practically every year, with a bulk of them coming during the Conference Finals or Stanley Cup Finals. From 2001 to 2011, six Stanley Cup Finals went the distance. We just love the quality of the NHL postseason, with all these series coming down to Game 7s, and some of these needing overtime. NFL, NBA, and MLB, you got nothing on them. Number two, the length. The NFL playoffs only last one month. And again, you have to wait a week between games. Yay. The MLB playoffs start up early in October, and the postseason usually ends by the end of the month. And sometimes they may have to play into the first week of November. But that's not always the case. The NBA playoffs usually go for as long as the NHL postseason. But again, the real playoffs don't really begin until the Final Four in mid-May. Yippee. As for the NHL, oh baby. The playoffs start up in mid-April and end in mid-June. That's two months of intense playoff hockey. The more playoff games, the better. We get the NHL for two months, double the length of time Time that the NFL and MLB give us. Sign us up. Number one, the parody. I mean, I guess the World Series is wide open once the field is set, but is there that much parody? The NBA, I mean, what a parody. I guess the Warriors, Lakers, and Spurs technically haven't won it every year in the 21st century. NFL, it's the New England Patriots every year. It feels like they have 15 Super Bowls for some reason, not six. But hey, the Pittsburgh Steelers once won multiple Super Bowls with Ben Roethlisberger. The Seattle Seahawks won three NFC championships from 2005 to 2014. Yeah, plus the whole Patriots thing, so that's not Parody. Sorry. In the NHL? Well, let's just say from 1999 to 2018, 12 different teams won the Stanley Cup. And over that 20 year span, every team except Arizona, Minnesota, Florida, Columbus, Montreal, St. Louis, Winnipeg, the New York Islanders, and the Toronto Maple Leafs had played in the finals at least once. But this is our year, Islanders. We can do it. That's right. Over the last 20 years, 22 of the 31 NHL teams appeared in the Stanley Cup final. That's parody if we've ever seen it. Parody is better for everybody. Everybody likes to see a new team win. We love how Hockey, best playoff tournament ever. Why else are the Stanley Cup playoffs the best in all of sports? Join me in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and myself on social media. We post great content all the time. Follow us on Instagram, follow TPS on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post videos every single week, so if you want more of me, you should probably go there. It's really good content and it's entertaining, so at least go check it out. Make sure to subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single week. Every week is a new video, so subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like. It takes one click right down there. Smash that like button. Please do it. Just do it for me. Do it, do it for yourself. Just do it for yourself. Because when you like something, it's better than disliking. Why not spread more love than hate? Spread some love, spread some liking, and you're going to feel good about yourself. I guarantee it. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo, and I'll see you next time. My knee.